And in fact, again, another vendor sort of vendor centric conversation is this um, ideology of art. Well, I say ideology, it may, not, it may, be, it may be real, but we'll be we're about <laughs> to find out. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, this is uh, again two terms that are coined all the time by vendors about how they use AI or ML to deal with security issues in, in, in enterprise environments. Now, what's your take on that? And, and, and do you think that there will be a time where you, w you won't need a human to manage your security uh, platforms in your organization? This will be compu purely um, computer driven. Um, where, do you, where do you see that going in the future? Well, I think, I mean, the, the starting point is, if you're not doing AI, are you even a vendor anymore? I mean, are you even an IT vendor? I'm it not even sure way. you exist. You yeah. know, it's the uh, it's a whole beer, beers in the woods thing, isn't it? Um, but, I, I mean, I think the reality is that as, as humans, and, and we see this, I, I had this conversation recently with a kind of a um, an IT security vendor, and we were talking about this idea of, augmentation of what we do as, as humans. So we've talked obviously a lot about data and a lot of the work that I do is, is around the data security, data compliance space. Mm. And what we're seeing in that space is absolutely an augmentation of what we can do as humans. And part of the reason that we need that is because of the amount of data, the amount of data that we create, the amount of sources that that data is being created by, you know, and as we, as we add increasing amounts of devices and and the way that people can create and use data, the, the, the more and more of those things we add, the more and more data that we create. Yeah. So keeping control, keeping a, an understanding of how the data is being used, is it secure, is it being accessed correctly, where is it being moved to, is very difficult for me to do as an individual. So some kind of tools that sit alongside what we're doing as an individual is, is useful. And, and I think this is exactly the same in the, in the security space. Mm. But also what we need our tools to be is to be smarter than things that just make binary decisions. You know, we can no longer, I suppose if we were to look at malware as a good example of this, we can no longer rely on some kind of predefined knowledge base of this is all of the existing threat that's out there yeah. because we can't respond quick enough when it's things like that. So mm -hmm. you know, the idea that we, de that, that we act on zero day threats, you know, the idea that we can spot things like ransomware yeah. running by understanding the normal behavior and then doing something when we see something abnormal. So, so if I give you a, a data-focused example for a moment, because mm. I talked about data focus and sure. security earlier on, but if I give you a data-focused example, one of the, the, the interesting examples we've seen in a number of customers and something that they have come to us for solutions for in the past has been this idea of being able to spot the movement of a lot of data to places that it shouldn't, because that's often a sign of data breach, either because somebody's about to leave a company and is trying to squibble away as much data as they can, or somebody's genuinely leaking data to somebody else. So what you're looking for when you do that is that movement of data or, more importantly, an unusual activity. And the only way that we can do that is by understanding what usual activity looks like initially. So one of the areas that we've seen where, and whether you want to call it artificial intelligence or machine learning, it doesn't really matter. But one of the areas that we've seen where that's been augmented really strongly has been in tools that do user behavioral analytics. So really? understanding what a normal user's day-to-day -day activity looks like, gotcha. and then when that user no longer does that and does something out of the ordinary, making some kind of decision based on that. But to go on to your other question about whether we see a point where we never need the human interaction for that. I mean, you can never say never, and, and maybe we'll get to a point where systems are smart enough to not only see the movement of that data, but are smart enough to understand the nuance of that movement. That, that, that's right. a question for another time. Big difference. But, mm. but yeah, but, but I think that's where the human element sits. You know, mm. I think mm. where, where we're seeing that augmentation have value at the moment is as a human, we can't keep an eye on absolutely everything. Right. But what we can do is make that nuanced decision that at the moment a, a machine can't, machine learning algorithms aren't smart enough to do. So, so f I'll give an example where we actually sat with a, um, a, a relatively well-known business, in fact, yeah. a very well-known business, um, and we were doing a review of how their data was being used. And one of the things we spotted during that review was an unusual movement of data from point A to point B. Mm. And now you could have looked at that, and actually the system flagged that up as a potential data breach. It was only when we shared that information with the customer that the customer understood the nuance. And the nuance was that the person was a buildings manager. Really? They were about to build, open a new building. And actually what he'd done was taken copies of lots and lots of plans put them on a USB stick because he had a site visit. I see. But the system didn't understand the nuance. The system just gotcha. saw the unusual movement of an amount of data to a 
different location, location yeah. and flagged that as a problem. So we still needed the nuance that sat on top of that. I, I, I mean, I another see. example is I, I, I spoke with a company a few weeks back who did who do some work in um, looking at building compliance and governance into video and voice conferencing. So look at something like Microsoft Teams or Zoom or WebEx. And, and they're starting to build security around compliance. So we can already build in something like Teams. Yeah. We can already build compliance that says you're not allowed to put sensitive information inside of a chat window. But what we can't do right now is to look at um, all of the video and audio conversation that Teams might deliver. And of course, while we may not be saying anything in chat that we shouldn't be, well, there's nothing stopping me and you having a conversation in Teams and me holding up a piece of paper that says sensitive information yeah, here, of course. just write it down. How does teams? Uh, how does team stop that? Well, right now it can't. Right. And what they have is a solution and approach that looks at that kind of technology uh, and can look at the thousands of hours of voice and video footage and try and apply some level of analytics and context to it. So if then, for example, every time I have a video conversation with you, yeah. I'm saying, why don't you email me on my personal account? Send me that detail on my personal account, or I'll send it to you on your personal account. So then spot that nuance that says. Why are you always doing that? Why does that person always do that? And then give that to a human who can it's then go and have a look at that in true context. But what I couldn't do as a human is review the thousands of hours of footage, exactly. CCTV, all those kind of things. So, so I think absolutely, I think in the mm. data management and the IT security space, uh, there is uh, really is a place for that kind of analytics, that stuff that can understand the baseline and can then spot when that baseline is has been deviated from in some kind of unusual way. But right now, I still think it's very much a, and then tell a human being. Um, and I think it's going to be that for quite some time. And I think most of the vendors you talk to are, are keen to keen to highlight their credentials there. This is not about replacing people. That's it. This is about augmenting yeah, a yeah. very, very difficult job. But I just think the amount of data that we create at one end and then the amount and complexity of the security threat at the other, that the only way we're going to be able to deal with that is to have machine learning of some description do a lot of the grunt work and then just start to flag up the things to us, which mm. it then has learnt is important. Um, and I think if we can do that, then we've probably got half a chance at, at dealing with a lot of the complex problems we're presented with.